Boom. All right. So welcome again to Bible study. And tonight we begin uh, our series for Advent for the month of December. Uh, and that is the King is coming. So all, so, so every Sunday of this month, as we celebrate Advent, uh, we will be talking about the King is coming through different versions of the scripture or references of the scripture. Uh, but for the Bible study, as I was thinking, as I was uh, considering, I said, uh, we have to, uh, it, it's good to say that the King is coming, right? That, that sounds wonderful. But uh, I think we have to make room for the King. Why be excited about the joyful, triumphant entry of the King into the world, but yet we don't allow in clear space for the King of Kings in our hearts. So for Bible study uh, for the next three weeks, I believe, uh, that's what we're going to be talking about, making room for the King. And so tonight we are talking about clearing space in our hearts, clearing space in our hearts. I certainly pray that everyone had the opportunity to uh, receive the notes. If not, I believe we're going to go ahead and drop the notes in just a moment in this Zoom call so you can have it. Uh, but if not, uh, as well, you can follow along. Again, please make sure to, re to uh, mute yourselves. All right, here we go. So before we hop in, I, I just want to make sure that we are all on one accord. Maybe uh, if y'all can do the show of hands or you can say in the comments, how many of you have actually heard of Advent before, uh, before we started talking about it this year? How many of y'all have actually heard of that before? Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Cool. I see. I see. Okay. Good. 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 Now, some others, I, I don't know. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. There we go. There we go. There we go. I see. I see. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. So, yes. So many of us have heard of Advent before, uh, but I, I thought that it um, would be beneficial to us to go a little bit deeper uh, into understanding Advent. And so that word Advent, it comes from the Latin term Adventus, right? So we dropped the U.S. off, which means the coming or the arrival. So it is this season of anticipation and preparation, not for gifts under the Christmas tree, not for kisses under the mistletoe, but leading up to Christmas or better yet, the birth of Jesus Christ. So there are themes that are associated with this four things, four weeks before Christmas week one that was celebrated all this week is hope this week coming up on Sunday. We will celebrate peace. <clears throat> the third week is God or it is joy. And then the fourth piece is love where when we talk about the love of Jesus Christ coming into the world, God's love, which is Jesus Christ coming into the world. Th these are, are the reasons why we celebrate. Uh, we celebrate Advent, not just because it's a part of the liturgical calendar, not just because it's something good to do, but we celebrate Advent um, to prepare our hearts and minds for the celebration of Jesus's birth. Just like we go and we, we not get down at the stores and we buying this thing off of Amazon, if you like me, or buying this thing or from this place, when we are preparing, right? We ought to be preparing our hearts, right? Preparing our hearts for Jesus's birth. Uh, as well, we remember the fulfillment of God's promises to us right through the coming of the Messiah that I came that you might have life and that life, you might have it more abundantly for God. So loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. These are promises, 
right? And, and these are just only a few promises, salvific promises, but promises nonetheless of the coming of the Messiah. But then ultimately, we want to cultivate a sense of hope. And we want to be expected of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Y'all, I, I don't know when Jesus is coming back. The Bible says that we don't know the day or the hour, but you know what? He is coming back. Be it in our lifetime or not, he's coming back, right? And so we have to be ready for when he comes or better yet, for when he comes for us. Uh, for those who are able to go back and watch on the live stream, or maybe you were in church on Sunday, I want to uh, take a moment and let's pause. With this week's emphasis being on hope, what is it that you are hoping for in this season of your life? Maybe uh, two people can share. Peace and harmony. Amen. I like to see the spiritual awakening for all men can, uh, so, so that we will turn back to the Lord. See, like to me, we are, we are getting lost out there now. I think we need to do an about face and turn back to the Lord. And that is through uh, repenting and, uh, you know, and spending time, more time with the Lord. Absolutely. Con con continuous clarity and understanding of God's word. Amen. Amen. Uh, I see in the chat, Talia says, peace and clarity. Miss uh, Teal says, spiritual growth. Micaiah says, spiritual growth and happiness. Um, w w one of the Jones is a truly United States of America. Dr. Cook says, uh, continue spiritual growth and peace. Amen. Amen. You know, all of us, right? All of us ought to have expectation. All of us ought to have a holy hope that only a holy God can give us that during this season that we will find exactly what it is that we are looking for. All right. So uh, so I, I wanted to make sure that, that we had that uh, as a framework to build upon tonight uh, to understanding what is Advent. And the reasons why we celebrate. Well, tonight I want to hop in. I want to hop in. And I want to talk about the biblical foundations of preparation. Mm, preparation. <laughs> preparation. In other words, uh, preparing the way. Well, uh, so often we've heard in, um, in, in, in church world that John the Baptist is the forerunner to Jesus Christ. What does that mean? I'm so glad that somebody asked that question tonight. To be the forerunner of Jesus Christ means that John was the person that set the stage for Jesus's arrival as he entered into earthly ministry. Uh, let's, let's understand a little bit about John the Baptist. How many of y'all were there on Sunday? How many of you watch? We talked about Luke chapter one, right? That John was that baby that Zechariah and Elizabeth had that was born through the miraculous promise, right? That Elizabeth was a barren woman. And remember to be, to be barren means that you are having difficulties, <laughs> that, that you are having difficulties with having a child, with becoming pregnant. And we realize that any woman in the Bible that was barren who ended up having children because God opened their womb, that child was significant. So nonetheless, John the Baptist was significant. He couldn't help but to be significant. His daddy was a priest, right? He had a special access to God. John the Baptist, as he grew, he lived a life of simplicity and discipline in the wilderness. He would wear a camel's hair and he would eat locusts and wild honey, right? John the Baptist lived off of the land. And uh, he, he was a little strange, but he had a primary mission. And his mission was to prepare ye the way of the Lord. It was to prepare 
people for the coming of Jesus Christ and the fulfilling of the prophecy in Malachi chapter three and one. Now, now some might have say, said that uh, John the Baptist didn't tell the truth, right? That, that John the Baptist was a little out of his mind when the preparing the way of the Lord, he was actually talking about the real Lord. For now, for, for our context, if we talk about preparing the way of the Lord, right, we, we almost sound like conspiracists because every few years people say, oh, through this numerology or oh, through this event or through this thing, Jesus is on his way back. But remember, no man knows the day nor the hour right, of the return of the Son of Man. And so we'll, we'll, we'll get there, but I wanted to first get us uh, going with talking about John the Baptist. So some, some scripture context and themes, we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 40, verses 3 through 6. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 3 through 6. And then we're also going to look at Matthew chapter 3, verse, verse 13. All right. So uh, somebody is probably wondering, what does Isaiah 40 have to do, right, right, which is Old Testament, which is Babylonian exile? What does that have to do with John? Great question. Let's read the scripture. Let's find out. Isaiah chapter 40, verse three through six. I hope you're there. Let's read it. it. says, the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness. What? Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough places plain and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord had spoken it. The voice, the voice said, cry. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass. And all the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. Well, what, what is this talking about? We, we, have, to, we have to put this into, into a historical context. This is the Babylonian exile. What's the Babylonian exile? The Babylonian exile was caused by Judah. And, and Judah is one of the tribes, right? One of the 12 tribes of Israel. When Judah's persistent disobedience to God, uh, moving in idolatry, meaning that you are putting other gods in place of your God and before your God and failure to uphold the covenant with God led to their divine judgment where they were sent out of their land. All right. This tribe descended from Judah, which is the fourth son of Jacob and Leah, right? From, from Genesis. And, and what was special though about Judah is though the Babylonian exile taught Judah a lesson, God still had major plans for Judah. God had to teach his children a lesson because through Judah, he would create a spiritual lineage. This spiritual lineage he would set up with David. And he told David that now, David, you were a little messed up. You're right. You, you couldn't control your flesh. You had a lot going on. But there's something in you that I can still use. Come on. I, I, I think somebody heard that on Sunday. That, that there's something in you that is still good, that, that though your flesh has some issues, your heart is after me. And so he says this, God says this, I will give you a promise. I will give you a promise, a Davidic dynasty that someone from your lineage, my God, would remain on the throne. Well, if you go all the way through, you remember, or we talked about on Sunday, that uh, through Joseph, Mary, a virgin, was chosen by the angel Gabriel. 
And all through there, just like a lot of us at Friendship Chapel, they kin. <laughs> and so Jesus is a part of the offspring of David's lineage. And so just as David had a throne that was that was um, uh, 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 mortal, now God births Jesus into the world through Mary so that he can have a throne that is eternal. King of kings, Lord of lords. All right. Yeah, y'all following with me here. L let me pause for a second. D does that make sense so far? If, if, if that's making sense, somebody let me know. Somebody let me know in the comments or something like that. Let me know if that's making sense. Okay. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. So, so Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ comes through the lineage of David. All right. So that's what we have. So that is why it comes about. So John's life and ministry is prophecy fulfilled from Isaiah 40. Oh, yeah. That before Jesus comes on the scene, somebody else has to come before him to prepare the way. All right. Good. Let, let's... uh. Let's let's talk about this connection and then we'll go to the question. So 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 here is the this this connection. That when it says that uh the voice cries out in the wilderness, this imagery reflects that preparation for the arrival of a king, right? That through emphasizing repentance, through leveling out obstacles, which is symbolic of sin in our barriers, we make ready for God's presence in our lives. Again, this is a fulfillment in John the Baptist because in all four of the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, John is identified as the voice crying in the wilderness. All right. And then there is a spiritual preparation here that talks about humility. And then again, talks about removing barriers. So the question that I ask us tonight is what does making the way straight signify in our context? How can we apply it to our lives and relationships? I know we're short on time, Pastor. And I don't want to delay things. No, we're not short on time. It's only 7.20. This is all we're talking about today. Go ahead. Okay. So uh, the question, in context of today, what does making the way straight? You just uh, let us know that um, the Advent helps us to prepare. The first Sunday of the Advent helps us to prepare our heart so that we might fully experience the coming not this time, the first coming of Christ, but the next coming. So uh, in today's context for me, that means that I need to be ready because like you say, it may not be in my lifetime that uh, he brings the world to an end. But whenever my life is over, that's it for me. Then I want to be ready for that moment. Whenever it occurs, I do that by continuing to build my relationship with him so that as seasons in my life change, I'm able to move around within his word and not be devastated by change. Uh, so I'm just, yeah, I'm just living in his word day to day. And whenever he comes, then my bag is, is almost packed. Uh, I still got a few things to put in it. All right. All right. All right. I appreciate that. Uh, Reverend Jones says clearly and intentionally seeking for God. Mm, that, that's good. Someone else want to, oh, Miss Francis said the life that we live may be the only Bible that people see. Amen. That's yeah. true too. Yeah. That's I true. don't have a comment really either. But Reverend Neely, when you look at what John did, he came to prepare the people's hearts and calling them to repent. And, and, and you look at when the second coming of Jesus occurs, he
he calls us to repent as well, genuine repentance. And we have to practice that daily because by nature, we have a sinful nature. And, and there are just so many distractions in the world. And, and we look at also that John the Baptist baptized the people who came. So, you know, washing away the sins. What did Jesus do? He came to wash away our sins so that we could have eternal life. And, and that was, John, John knew what his mission was. And as we talk about God having a plan and purpose for each one of us, John knew what his purpose was. That's good. D Deacon Jones, I, I know you were trying to say something there. Deacon Jones, were you trying to say something? If if so, you mute. Okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, oh. yeah, uh, yeah. I was trying to say something there. Uh, well, while I was saying great, uh, in a sense, we should see ourselves as like John the Baptist. That we are we're forerunners for Christ. That we'll we'll to witness that uh, that He's coming, and our life should should reflect that and uh and that others might know that uh that Jesus Christ have, is coming back you know and that's through us you know and, and how he have changed our life also yeah yeah that, that's good um miss boone says being a light witnessing to others that's good that's good you know my personal re reflection on that was was a few things uh, and, and then i can't help but to bite off of miss margo a little bit too is that uh, the best way that we can make the way straight is by getting ourselves together. <laughs> and, 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 and part of getting ourselves together, right, is doing what we're doing and engaging in, in, in these theological discussions and thinking more deeply and more critically about, about what Christ has called us to do. In other words, knowing our purpose, and if we all operate in our purpose, then we all become forerunners in our own right. That uh, before Jesus Christ might be revealed to someone else, we show up. So, so imagine then the weight, right? The responsibility that it is to be a true follower of Jesus Christ, that I have to represent him in all times, in all spaces. Th thoughts on that? Thoughts on that? Yes, uh, that's all right. That we should. We uh, uh, in all, all that we do, we should. Uh, um, uh, reflect um, Christ in our lives and every opportunity that we get uh, among people that we are the light and we are salt that and and that we should um, people should know that we should and and we should pray every day to ask the Lord to uh, 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 to let that come forth to, when that opportunity to when we meet people to let them know us. Uh, uh, about the Christ that we serve. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I, I, I think, I think too, Reverend Ely, yeah. that um, it serving God, being a follower of Christ, has to be more than something you do. It's lifestyle. It is who you are. So you're always in a mode of you. We should always be in a mode of being ready. At whatever situation, whether it be just a smile or, you know, something more uh, involved, just to share Christ. That's because right. it's who we are. It's what we do. We don't put it on. We wear it. It is us. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That's good. Pastor, That's good. Pastor Mike. Yes, ma'am. Um, for me, it's, um, I'm, I'm hearing and I'm feeling like living a Christ-like life by modeling um, love and kindness and humility, as well as integrity as a Christian, because I'm going to I have to model so that I can help remove any obstacles for others to see 
Jesus clearly through their own actions by the way I act. That's so good. That's so good. So good. Uh, I, I, I didn't want to skip this. Ms. Robbins has it says, when I govern my life, no matter the circumstances, so that others can see Christ living in me, letting my light shine, such that some would want to know who is this that makes me content no matter what. Yeah, all this is good. So so I, I think the saints are getting it, right? I think the saints are getting it. Now, now I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to uh, I, I'm getting ready to cuss uh, because um, I got to use the word repentance. <laughs> You're right. In, in in our in our Christian context, we 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 love we love to uh talk about um forgiveness, but we don't necessarily talk about repentance. So so let let's talk about that. Let's let's talk about it tonight. Uh John the Baptist message to us. We're talking about clearing our hearts and preparing way, the pre preparing the way was repentance. Here's the definition that repentance is the act of fully turning away from sin and redirecting your heart towards God. Matthew chapter three and two. What does he say? Repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Now, I, I, I think we I think we need to uh, break that down just a little bit that uh, that repent comes from the Greek word in which I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to drop it in the chat. Uh, M E T A N O I A. For those who are uh, trying to uh, write that down. M E T A N O I A. Metanoa, which means to change one's mind. I put or, but really we should say and direction. Why and instead of or? We should change our mind and our direction because if you get your mind right, your life ought to follow. It's easy to change your direction without changing your mind. But it's impossible to change your mind and not change your direction. So you have to change your mind and your direction. That we have to be heartfelt in turning away from our sin and turning toward God. Repentance is not about regret. It is an intentional decision that I will no longer do what God is not happy with. That I choose to be in the will and follow in the purposes of God. So, 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 so that one word carries that much weight. Here's the next word, the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is not just a place, but the kingdom of heaven means God's sovereignty. I'm sorry, God's sovereign rule and reign. God's sovereign rule and reign. What does sovereign mean? Sovereign means that God can do whatever God wants to do, however God wants to do it, whenever God wants to do it, wherever God wants to do it, through whom God wants to do it. Why? For whatever reason, right? Good. So, so God's sovereign rule and reign. That is in our present reality that Jesus' arrival Mark the beginning of God's kingdom breaking into human history. But Jesus, but the but that future hope of the kingdom of heaven will be realized once we are caught up, right? Caught up to meet him in the air. So 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 that's what it's talking about with the kingdom of heaven. Then that last part has come near. This phrase indicates that the kingdom of heaven is not a distant or an abstract thought, but it is imminent. Right, so somebody mute yourself. It is imminent. It is accessible. Though Jesus' kingdom is at hand, it is close enough for people to enter into and to experience it right now. Right? That, that's, why, that's why we do what we do, because we want to experience the kingdom of heaven even on earth. Thy kingdom come, my God. Thy will be done. Where? On earth as it is in heaven. And so the kingdom of heaven, we don't have to wait until we close our eyes on this side. We can experience the kingdom of God right now. 
he here here's my nugget that that I want to share that I want to share that uh, repentance is not just about acknowledging sin, but also about actively clearing away what hinders God's work in our lives. L let that soak in. Repentance is not just about acknowledging our sin, but it is. Uh, about actively clearing what hinders God's work in our lives. And so our next step as those who are growing in the faith, as those who are strong in the faith, is to truly live a life that's proof is repentance. <laughs> that that we, we want to not be guilty of doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. Like a child wets themselves, right? Use the bathroom on themselves. Oops, I messed up. I had an accident. Well, it's okay because the parent comes in, cleans the child up. Then after the parent cleans the child up, well, they keep working with them. And after a while, the child should not keep having accidents. How many of us say we are no longer babes in Christ, but keep having the same accidents? <laughs> are we repenting or are we just saying, being like settling with saying, God knows my heart, right? Right, okay. So, so that, that's what I want you to uh, really, really think about there. M Matthew chapter three, verse 13, uh, I, I think this is the correct thing. No, 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 no. It's Matthew chapter three, verses one through three. I believe that's what I was trying to write. Russian. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. And he was saying, what? Repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is he who was spoken of through who y'all? The prophet Isaiah. That voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him. All right. So, uh, okay. I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this time. So let me, let me, let me, uh, take a moment right here. I see 70 participants logged in. Oh, that makes my heart so excited. You know, I got to go ahead and launch the poll. Let's take, uh, 30 quick seconds. Let me know who is here. Let me know where you are. Man, God is blessing us right now, right now, right now. Amen. All right. I pray that I pray that the biblical uh, background has been thorough enough. Uh, for for you Bible scholars tonight, uh, we, we're about to move more into into the practical side, to the practical side, a welcoming space for Christ, welcoming space for Christ. Again, those who are able to participate on the on the poll, uh, please do. Uh, I, I would much appreciate that to help us out. All right. So so we 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 had to go to this practical strategy. Uh, the the first part is it, going to sound funny. It's going to really sound funny, but um, he, here's the truth. You, you got to declare, declutter your space. So we, we welcome space for Christ physically, preparing our environment. Uh, your house and the back of your car is a representation of what your life is like. Your house and your car, the back of your car, is a representation of what your life is like. When you declutter your space, it helps you to focus. It helps you to create a sense of peace, right? And so, and so, and so as we are in this season, as we are in this season, right, again, we are as spiritual as we need to be practical, uh, it's time to clean up what you messed up, right? Now, 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 don't start your life all over again. Don't go get a new car payment, right? But clean your stuff up. <laughs> uh, clean your stuff up. 
You, you would be amazed at how God can operate when you give him space in your personal life. Here's the second thing. You got to declutter your space because then now, so that you don't fill it up again with a whole bunch of random stuff, you have to set up a sacred space. If, if y'all remember in, uh, now, now th that 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 uh, discipleship series was amazing that, that our pastor Emeritus sent us through. I remember the uh, part on quiet time and it uses the term that every day we ought to have a personal rendezvous with God. Here's a question. Where is your sacred space to meet God? Right? We, we, we're so quick to set up Zoom meetings to meet. We're so quick to set up places to meet with others. But where is it that you meet with God? Maybe your sacred space to meet with God is in your shower. Maybe it's 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 in a special chair. Maybe it is in your in your bed, wherever it is, right? But uh what is your sacred space? What, what is the place that maybe everyone can enter into? Maybe some of us have really adopted having a closet. But do this: create a sacred space for your prayer time, for your reflection. For your Bible study, just like we eat every day, we ought to be eating on the word of God. Now, maybe you like me, sometimes reading can get a little cumbersome. Turn on the word and listen to it, right? Move around, do what you have to do to get the word of God in you, but create sacred space. Here's the truth of the matter is that wherever you are and wherever you invite God, that then becomes your sacred space. And then here's the third part physically that you have to prepare yourself for Sabbath rest. Uh, I, I grew up with, with, with some old school pastors that were great men, uh, but outdated concepts who told me it's better to wear out than to rust out insinuating that that uh it's better to work yourself to the end and you're no good than to sit around and do nothing well well he, here's the facts that not well i would pray that none of us especially on this online space or those who are watching are doing nothing but you are no good if you wear yourself out and so we have to create physical pauses from our busyness for the purpose, one, to restore our souls, but two, to reflect and to worship. Some of the most powerful moments, some of my most best sermons, uh, uh, individual things, I'm like, wow, I got to get myself together, came from me taking a moment to just be still. Be still and worship and you would be amazed at how God would speak in your life all right so so I'm sorry I, I got some work getting done if y'all can hear that all right so th that's the physical part all right here's the emotional part here's the emotional part that uh we have to prepare our hearts we have to prepare our hearts for the king so what does that mean that we need to release the emotional badge baggage, right? As we go into this season, what good is it to, to do all of this stuff and making room for Jesus Christ, but yet all we're doing is actually just pushing grudges out of the way. We're pushing anger out of the way, right? We are uh, pushing different things out of the way. That should not be, somebody just wrote all over the PowerPoint presentation. God bless your heart. All right. Don't touch it. Okay. <laughs> Stop touching. <laughs> oh, I love the saints. Okay. All right. Here we go. Let go of those grudges. Right. You know you have a grudge when, when you hear a name, it takes you to a place. Right. You, you, you know, you have a grudge. You, you know, you have a worry, right? When you think of something or you see something, you become triggered. I want to encourage you write those things down, write it down. 
what's been weighing you down. And then I want you to ask God to give it, to, 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 to do what he needs to do with it, right? Surrender that burden to Jesus Christ. Cultivating gratitude. This is what we did all last month as we were writing down the blessings in our lives. It's hard to be consumed with what's going bad when we're able to see all that's going well or with all that God is doing in us and into fellowship with the saints, right? Being in fellowship on Bible study, being in fellowship on Sunday morning, being in fellowship in Sunday school, right? Getting in small groups with people, praying and encouraging one another. This is what we have to do to create space because what happens is that one begins to testify, then another begins to testify, then another begins to share, then another begins to encourage. And that iron sharpens iron and we begin to be better. And a meaningful conversation can go a really, really long way. All right, here, here is uh, near about the, the last thing is that we wanna be able to prepare our soul. Man, okay, hold on. Let, let, let me stop this and reshare it because it's just all over. Okay, here we go. I think we should be able to see it again. All right, is that we want to be able to deepen our prayer lives, right? We want to deepen our prayer lives. So so you, you saw the clarion call go out. Uh, Y'all, I'm excited for those who didn't hear it earlier. Uh, normally, we have about eight call-ins on prayer. Yesterday, we had 57 call-ins on prayer, Right. But tonight, seeing that there are 70 people logged in shows me that we have capacity to do more, right? We need to deepen our prayer lives. And one of the best ways to do that is to pray together. Pray together until you can get the strength to pray on your own, right? Have some dedicated time to pray. Write down your prayer request and begin to check it off as God does it. Right. Write down your prayer request because it's easy to forget. You go through life and go through different things that you're like, Lord, I was supposed to be praying for so and so, so and so. Oh, God, you know about it. Just touch him. <laughs> you, you, are y'all going to act like y'all ain't never did that before? It's just me. I know it's not just me. Right. So so imagine how our days can go better if we did 10 minutes of prayer in the morning. 10 minutes of prayer at lunch, 10 minutes of prayer before we go to bed, 10 in the morning, 10 at lunch, 10 before we go to bed. How, how many of y'all are going to commit to a 10, 10, 10 challenge? L let, let me see you. If that's you, how many of y'all can commit to that for the next week? And let's see how our lives change that 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the afternoon, 10 minutes at, b before we go to bed, we're going to pray, right? And when we pray, pray for your family. I see your hands. I see you in the comments. But watch this. I need you to pray for your pastor. I need your prayers. It's a lot of weight. I need your prayers. But then I need you to pray for your church, right? Pray for your family. Pray for yourself. Pray for your pastor. Pray for your church. Commit, commit to that. Commit to that. 10 in the morning, 10 in the afternoon, 10 at night. And I'm believing God is going to bless us. God is going to show up in a mighty way. Y'all, can y'all stop writing on my presentation? Yeah. <laughs> Lord. Reverend have mercy. Yes. A 10 2 4 sound like a Dr. Pepper. The old commercial. <laughs> 10, 2, and 4. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Thank, thank y'all. Thank y'all for, for, for committing. All right. Here's the next thing that, that we want to dive into the scripture. He, here's the truth. I think we give enough meat on Wednesday night that you could revisit a different part of Wednesday night every day and meditate on it. And that gives you word. I would like to think that I, I leave you with something enough on Sunday that at least it could get you up till Tuesday, you know, right. To, to really think about it. All right. Uh, here's another way. You can never go wrong with the book of Proverbs, right? There is a proverb 
for each day of the week. So read you a proverb a day, and guess what? You'll grow in wisdom. You'll grow in strength. Praise God. All right, so 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 that's what I'm encouraging uh, us to do. Dive into the scripture. Here's another thing. Prepare your hearts uh, because because we're going to go on a fast at the top of the year. Uh, January, put, go ahead, put it down on your calendar. January 6th through the 10th, January 13th through the 17th. We're going to go on a fast, 10 day fast. And I, and, and I'll give you some things around it, right? January 6th through the 10th, January 13th through the 17th. We are going to fast together as a church. Uh, but even before then you can fast, right? Sometimes if you like me, Lord have mercy, you can get on TikTok and you can be on TikTok all night long. Right? You can be on these other programs, Facebook. I see y'all on there. Just right there, thing, getting hacked and all. Bless your hearts. Right? <laughs> take a break. Take a break from social media. Right? T take a break from things that, that's no good for you. Really stop it. Right? But but take a break. Fast. Right? Dedicate that time to pray. Dedicate that time to just sit in God's presence, to listen to the word of God, to seek God. All right, but then here's the most important part. Invite the Holy Spirit. We need divine help, right? We need divine help. And that's how you make room for God. And you say, God, before I do anything, I invite you in. God, before I sing in the choir, I invite you in. God, before I stand and read the scripture or the prayer, I invite you in. Before I preach, I invite you in. Before I go to my job with these co-workers, I really don't fool with like that. I invite you in. Before I go back home for Thanksgiving, for Christmas, and deal with family members that's not my favorite, I invite you in. God, I invite you into my life. When you invite the Holy Spirit in, he takes residence in you. And so in other words, you want to ask God, let your spirit fill the empty places in my life and make me more like Jesus Christ. He, here's our question for reflection. How can we as a community of believers prepare a collective way for the Lord during this Advent season? How can we as a community of believers prepare a collective way for the Lord during this Advent season? Um, what we can do personal reflection, personal um, preparation so that as the community comes, we understand that our growth is to build the kingdom. We bring hope and we want to be prepared to give that to all of those who come into the community, whether that be the community of Friendship Chapel per se or the community of wherever our world is. Amen. Amen. Ms. Robin Sessom says, by being intentional in our relationships and fellowship. Amen. Somebody else. As a Pastor community. Mike, yes. What, what about just surrounding yourself with um, other believers within the community, making yourself available, um, getting out there, um, letting people see you, surround yourself with um, like minds, um, Amen. and fellowshipping with each other to do um, what is needed to do within the community. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Uh, Miss Anderson said, give to those who are less fortunate and remind them of the true reason for the season. Amen. Amen. Somebody else. How, how, how can we as a community do this? I think recognizing that we are a part of the community because right now we're so in individualistic and not recognizing the need to be in a relationship with someone or a body. Because I, I look at in order for church to be better, you also have to bring something to the church and look at the other people in the church as part of your family. 
we're the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. In addition to that, it, everybody needs somebody to mentor and to be mentored. Mm, mm, that's good. I see Ms. Bobette Boone says, point non-believers to Christ. Uh, yes. A anybody else? How can we as a community prepare a collective way for the Lord? I think also self-preparation. Mm -hmm. As we look at it being a community, it starts with us individually. And then we each bring something to it. And, and that creates that community. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. You know, the, the one that, that I wrote down was <clears throat> embodying the, the four-week themes outside of Advent, too. So, so we've focused on it during Advent, but then we embody it. So how can I be a more hopeful person, right? Or, or a person that gives hope to someone else, you know, later on, how, how, how can I be and operate in peace, right? How, how, how is it that, that I can show love? How is it that I can uh, give joy, even if I don't feel joy? Right. So I, I think all these things are, uh, are are definitely important. So uh, for our personal devotion and quiet time this week, this is my uh, encouragement to you. Uh, here's our prayer focus to ask God to reveal areas in your life that need clearing. <laughs> that That's a loaded ask. That's a loaded ask. Ask God to reveal areas in your life or, or your heart that need clearing and then pray, excuse me, pray for the courage to repent and the wisdom to welcome Christ's transformative presence in your life. Here's how we're reflecting Isaiah 40 verses three through five journal, right? On how you can make straight the path of the Lord or for Christ uh, in your life this week and write down just one act of preparation that you will commit to for the rest of this month. Uh, of course, uh, I'm always going to give you an invitation. Uh, how can you invite somebody to join this journey of preparation? In other words, tell somebody, get on Bible study, encourage them, get on Bible study, be accountable, be accountable, make them accountable, get on Bible study, bring somebody to church, invite people to church, people you don't know to church. Again, my, my, my favorite, my favorite thing is, when I ask somebody, where do you fellowship? And they say, uh, 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 you don't fellowship nowhere. Come on, come on over here to this church. I want my pastor to be your pastor. And uh and, and also allow me to um thank God for so many of you all. You you are sharing the Sunday sermons and you are sharing uh flyers and tagging people and talking to people in comments online. Let's do more of that, right? Because that helps spread the word. People see that. People are, are learning the church's name in a new light now. And, and that's what we want. Uh, to God be the glory for that. Let's be the type of people that bring people to church. All right? And, and, uh, and make that way in the wilderness. All right? Uh, okay, that, that's, that's it for the Bible study. Let me pause.